Hi everyone, welcome to part two. In this video, we're going to make the handle parts, the support bars, and the dial thing you can see at the back there. Okay, so let's turn our attention to the, the back of the, the object. And I'll start with the cylinder. This part is going to be those little copper brass parts above where the leather strap is going to go or the leather wrap around the handle is going to be. So place that approximately in the middle of that part there and then scale it in the, uh, the Z axis of course. So S for scale, Z for Z axis and just bring that down. Make it a little bit bigger because the subdivision modifier will make that a little bit smaller and of course apply the rotation and scale. Let's tab into edit mode and go into edge select mode. Select mode. In fact let's select both the top and bottom edge loops and control B to bevel. As before, let's make sure that segments is set to 2 and the shape is set to 1. And with Ctrl R, add a couple of edge loops and scale them in the Z axis and increase them increase to 1. Let's do the same for the top and bottom. An inset and then a mean increase, and then we'll delete those faces in the center. Let's tab out and add a subdiv modifier. Viewport level set to 2, right click shade smooth. We've done this a lot in the, um, the first video, part one. So that's, it's a common technique that I use to, to create these shapes. Now thinking about the support bars, I thought I'd give this a bit more, well, give it a flat top. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, select the edge loop and press F to fill and create a, a face there. And next, I want to add a mirror modifier. Now the object pivot point or transform origin is at the center. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with the mirror modifier added, I'm going to select, drag that to the top of the stack firstly and enable the Z axis. But nothing changes. It's there, but we can't see it. So we need to edit the, the axis point, the transform point of this uh, origin, the origin point, I should say. So up here, I turn this option on. And now we can move this um, up and down. Vertex snapping is selected. And if I hold down the control key as I move it and move my mouse pointer over a, uh, an appropriate vertex, it will snap to where I want it. So there you go, there's that little secret right there. With that done, let's apply the mirror modifier. Okay, let's create the... Um, um, the object for the gap in between these two parts. So in edit mode, I'm going to select these two edge loops and shift D, duplicate them like that. And then press the P key and separate by selection. And now we have this as a separate object. There you go. So if we select that now and tab into edit mode, select everything by pressing the A key or Alt and Shift Alt click. And then right click and bridge edge loops. Right click to shade smooth and that's good enough for now. We'll come back to that and add the, le uh, the leather strap around that later on. So for the, for the dial part, I'm going to copy these parts here after deleting the, 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 the part that was there before. So copy those with Shift D and place them at the back and rotate them 180 degrees. And again, with vertex snapping, I'll put them there nice and snug and apply the rotation. And what's cool about Blender is you can select more than one object and tab into edit mode. So that's what I've done here. I'm going to select all of these vertices here. But remember, we need to be in X-ray mode or wireframe to select everything right through the model. So I'm going to turn on X-ray and make a box selection there. And with those selected, I'm just going to move them back towards the, uh, the front of that part there. And 
Again, we're adding a bit more visual interest to the model by doing this. So with that said, and with that in mind, I'm going to create another um, section at this part here where the dial is going to be. So I'm going to select this face here and press I to inset. Now we can press Ctrl B. Let's turn off the mean crease. We don't need that right now. But yes, Ctrl B and segments to one. Make that quite thin. That's going to be the, uh, the the gap between the inner part and the outer shell. And press E to extrude and bring that in just a little bit. Now it's a case of just tightening up some um, edge loops and some adding some mean creases here and there. So let's look at what we've got. Let's isolate it with the forward slash key or the question mark key. Now firstly, let's select those two inner edge loops in the recess area. And those two that are right there at the back. And increase the uh, mean crease to one. And make sure they're nice and sharp. So now we can select this edge loop, turn off the uh, mean crease on that one. We we'll select this edge loop and this one here. Press Ctrl B. Scroll the mouse wheel to get two segments. As before, we're using the shape of one. Let's select the inner face there and press I to inset and increase the increase yet again as support loops. That helps with the subdivision not spilling over into the flatter areas. Check out the first video if you haven't, that will explain why we kind of do that. Having done that, I then looked at it and thought the gap is probably a little bit too big than I anticipated. So as before we did in part one actually, I want to select all the faces that make up this part right up to the first uh, crease that we have inside there. We want to scale this up, but not in the X axis. So press S for scale. Shift X to exclude the X axis and bring that out so we get a much smaller gap. Thank you, Mr. D. So something like that is pretty good. Okay, let's make the dial ring next. So I'll move the 3D cursor to this object. So with that object selected, press Shift S and cursor to select it. And at this point, I'll uh, add a cylinder. I'll fast forward it because it's the same stuff you've seen many times before and apply the rotation and scale. And we'll snap that there, tab into edit mode, isolate it with the forward slash key. Now I'm gonna select both of these um, faces, front and back, press I to inset, and give it a, a fairly decent thickness, and then delete those faces. Switch to edge mode, alt click, shift alt click, and then right click bridge edge loops. Now we can select this outer edge and just pull it back, something like that. Now let's select that edge loop there, bring that forward just a little bit, a bit more of an angle. So select all of these edge loops, in fact not the one at the back on the inner, and add a subdivision modifier. Right click and shade smooth. Obviously we added the, the bevels as well with control B on those, very small tight bevel. Now it doesn't look quite right because we have these inner faces or the faces at the back. So let's just turn off the subdiv modifier, add a loop cut there. And now we can select these faces and remove them. And we'll select this one here, just increase them, increase to one and we'll add a few more edge loops for support. Oops, wrong place, there we go. The increase of one, and we'll do the same on the inside, just there. That should do it, so let's turn our subdiv back on. That's looking pretty good, it's a nice shape. 
that will kind of frame the, the dial that we're going to add next. So if I call up folks, we're going to make a retro dial thingy, which I actually based this on an old cooker. It's Mr. Incredible. So once again, I'm adding a cylinder, 16 sides. And I'm going to place that in the center, of course, and scale it up a little bit. So fairly basic stuff. Again, apply the rotation and scale to avoid any issues later on. Tab into edit mode. And we're going to add an inset to the front face. About there. Now at this point, let's add another inset. And now we want to switch to the front view. So that's number one on the numpad. We're going to select these five vertices. And I'm going to scale them in the Y axis to zero. So you can see there the green line, that's the Y axis. So press S for scale, Y for, for the Y axis and zero. That will flatten them out like that. Then I'm going to move them with some vertex snapping to bring them into line like that. And do the same on the other side. That will give us a basis to where we can extrude to create the, the dial grip, if you like. That looks pretty good. Now in face mode, we select this one here and press E to extrude. Something like that, just a little bit further out. And then, yeah, that's better. Let's press E to extrude again and bring it out to the full extent of the dial. Okay, let's scale that down in the Z axis and the one at the back there, these edge loops. In fact, we could have done that in the, in the Y axis as well. So let's select both of those and press SY. So it tapers off just a little bit. Let's add some edge loops with Ctrl R. I'll just add a couple there. Let's switch to vertex mode and select every opposing vertex and press J to join them. That will simply create an edge to connect those vertices. As I collect, uh, select two at a time and press the J key. Now we've got some nice quads and finally vertically as well. Now we have some more geometry to work with. Let's switch over to face mode. And for now, I'm going to add an edge loop there, uh, an edge loop there, and one there. And switch into face mode, I'll select these. Perhaps two more. Yeah, that's better. And press Alt-E and select extrude faces along normals. In the options box just that popped up there, just tick on offset even and that'll make sure that they have a nice even offset. Now with these faces selected, let's press I for inset. Let's add a loop cut right there. Let's create a bevel on the outer edge. Shape one, segments two as before. And let's add a support loop just there with a mean crease of one. Now add the subdiv modifier, levels two and right click and shade smooth. That's looking pretty good, but we still have some work to do. Right, face mode, and let's select these back faces. And delete those like that. And let's select these edges here, which we don't want to keep in here. So let's select these and that one there. 
and with Control delete let's dissolve those let's do the same at the bottom we'll come back to that part actually later on and do some more cleaning up let's scale these edge loops just there along the Y axis that will give us a more rounded look to the top and yes I did miss an edge loop just there so we'll come back to that later when I spot that and, re and remove it so with that done let's place that in its position and once more I feel like the gap is too big so I will tab into edit mode and there's the edge loop that I just mentioned which I missed so I will select that and delete it before we do that let's just go and uh, select these faces so all the outer ones and then the bevel one S for scale and exclude the X axis with shift X just to make that fit a little, fit a little bit more snugly in, in the gap that's better <laughs> okay yeah let's do this so let's select the, um, the edge loop there that I missed earlier so alt click and control delete you can see there dissolve edges let's also delete dissolve these ones as well we don't need these oops so right up to about there and these two at the top and probably these two just below the notch let's dissolve those as well with control delete now I originally built this with an inset as you can see there so that was the preferred method which I had kind of forgotten when I remade it so feel free to choose to do that method instead so there's an inset on the facing faces and with that cut you can, you can keep all the quads and not revert to triangles which is a plus okay let's turn our attention to uh, the support pipes which hold the handle and connect it to the body so with this one I'm going to add a bezier curve I'm going to bring that into position and the bezier curve is lying flat in the X and Y so I'm going to rotate that 90 degrees so it's facing us in the front view like that apply the rotation with Control A, tab into edit mode and now it's a case of just manipulating the points and putting them at the right places with some rotation and scale to insert points or subdivide them effectively adding more points to this curve select two points and then right click and do subdivide as you just saw there I'll speed this up because it's quite tedious and it's fairly straightforward it just takes a few minutes to get this to the shape that you want really if I go down to the curve options properties let's turn the bevel up to the right thickness now we can see a little bit better what's going on and I tried changing the handle types but it didn't make much of a difference in this instance so uh, we'll just carry on playing with these handles let's move that one up a touch so I subdivided the, uh, the segment there and on this side as well to help it become a little bit more straight let's bring that one so it intersects through the body and that's looking pretty good okay with that done let's just check our um, resolution on the object because if we switch to wireframe mode you can see there's quite a lot of um, facets there so let's turn this down I think 5 is good and if I isolate that the sec sections there there's Count Dacula but there is an 8 there's 12 which is a good number nice and low res and we can work with that so that's good the next step is to convert the curve into a mesh so with that done go to object convert to mesh 
wise to make a backup of the curve before you do that, in case you want to go back and make some changes. Okay, now with that done, we've got faces and edges and vertices. Let's get rid of some of these edge loops, which we don't, really don't need, and it just causes or adds more geometry that aren't really needed. So we'll select some of these and dissolve them. And we're keeping the other ones there because we need those for support loops and to maintain the shape when we add the subsurf modifier. Let's do that now. And there you go. Levels two, of course. Then that works really well. There are many ways to do this. In fact, at the end of the video, I did another way um, of doing this with a single vertex. So if you want to watch that at the end of the video, feel free. It's another way to do that. Let's add the mirror modifier, but in this, type, um, in this case, we're going to use another object's orientation. So we'll, select, we'll click on this object, and because that pivot point is at the center, that will mirror nicely. And finally, let's put these little caps at the end of the, the pipes where they touch the body there. They connect to the main body. So I'm going to reuse this part and delete half of it. Let's delete the bottom half there. And this shape is fine, but it's probably a little bit too complicated for what it is. So tap into edit mode. We don't need these faces here at the bottom because they're going to be intersecting through the body. Let's delete those. We also don't need some of these edge loops here. So we can Alt-click and Shift, Alt-click and dissolve those. And the rest of it is fine. Now we can position that. Let's set the origin to geometry first by right-clicking there. Let's bring that roughly in that position there. Sit, turn X-ray on. And rotate that. We don't actually want it facing uh, parallel to the body. We want it 90 degrees to the support pipe. So you can see there I'm kind of highlighting that edge, but that's not where we want it to, to, to align with. It doesn't look as good in, in solid mode. So I decided to rotate that perpendicular to the support pipe like that. And that looks, looks a bit nicer like this. It might be a little bit too thick or too big. So let's scale that down a little bit. And because we rotated it, I'm going to switch to local mode. And you can see there we can move it along its own Z axis quite nicely. And finally, we can apply a, well, add a mirror modifier first. Raise that up in the stack. Select the Z axis. And again, let's use this object as the transform or the mirror point. That's looking good, so let's apply the mirror modifier. And also apply it to the, the, the bar. These ones are fine. We just have the rotation to apply there. And that's it, that's looking really good. So here's the, the version that I mentioned the alternative version of how to create this uh, this bar and that's a single vertex where I extruded into this shape there you can see the highlighted line and if you add a skin modifier to that and chain the mean radius x and y that will give you the thickness and from then on you can add a subdiv okay thanks for watching everybody join me in part three and we'll continue with the hook shot for now take care and I'll see you soon bye bye